Coffee Break Italian, Season 1, Episode 9. Buongiorno a tutti e benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Ciao a tutti, sono Francesca. Ciao, it's Katie. And this is Mark. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee Break Italian, in which we are going to be helping you learn Italian. Now, in this series so far, we've been covering a number of topics which have helped you learn the basics of Italian, introduce yourself, cope with some difficult situations you might find yourself in if you're traveling in Italy. And today we're taking that one stage further by learning how to deal with language problems. Allora, Katie, come stai oggi? E sei contenta di essere di nuovo qui per imparare un po' di italiano? Sto bene, grazie. But I didn't understand anything else, I'm afraid. If you don't understand something, Katie, you can say non capisco. Non capisco. We'll come back to this later in the lesson. Francesca, what you did say was... Sei contenta di essere qui oggi per imparare un po' di italiano? Are you happy to be here once again today to learn a little Italian? Certo! Good <laughs> stuff. Let's get started with the lesson then. Now, by way of our recap in this lesson, we're going to start with a conversation similar to one we heard last time. And this is where I'm going to be asking for some directions in the town and Francesca is going to be playing the part of the person who can give me these directions. However, there's going to be a little more in this conversation. You'll pick up some of the things we covered last time, but you'll also hear some new content. So, Katie, sei pronta? Sì. Si. Let's listen to our conversation. Scusi, mi puoi aiutare? Certo, dica. C'è un ufficio postale qui vicino? Sì, ce n'è uno qui vicino. Vada dritto, prenda la prima strada a destra e poi giri a sinistra. L'ufficio postale è in piazza San Giovanni. Mm, scusi, non capisco. Ah, ok. Allora, sempre dritto, poi a destra e poi a sinistra. Guardi sulla cartina. L'ufficio postale... È qui, Piazza San Giovanni. Grazie. Okay, so obviously what happened here was that I was giving some directions and I didn't fully understand those directions. So, Katie, what phrase did I use to say that I don't understand? You said, scusi, non capisco. Non capisco. I don't understand. Let's try repeating that. Non capisco. Non capisco. Okay, so let's go back and have a little listen to that difficult part of the conversation where we didn't understand. Francesca, can you say your original answer one more time, please? Sì, ce n'è uno qui vicino. Vada dritto, prenda la prima strada a destra e poi giri a sinistra. L'ufficio postale è in piazza San Giovanni. So, this is obviously the answer to the question, c'è un ufficio postale qui vicino? Katie, what does that question mean? Is there a post office nearby? Exactly. So, Francesca began by saying, there is one nearby. Sì, ce n'è uno qui vicino. And then Francesca gave some more complex directions than the ones we are used to. She started by saying, go straight on. Vada dritto. Then she said, take the first street on the right. Prenda la prima strada a destra. You might be familiar with the word strada, meaning street. So, prenda la prima strada, take the first street a destra, on the right. Now, if you didn't understand that first bit, you do already know a destra, on the right. And then she said, E poi giri a sinistra. Now, if you think about the word giri, then that sounds a little like gyrate. So, gyrate to the left. It sounds a little strange. Giri a sinistra, turn left. And then finally, the post office is in St. John's Square. L'ufficio postale è in piazza San Giovanni. 
So we now understand all of those directions, although there was an easier version, which was given after I said, scusi, non capisco. Let's listen to the easy version of these directions, and this would be helped by the fact that we have una cartina, a map, a town plan, if you like. Sempre dritto, poi a destra, e poi a sinistra. So there we have three straightforward directions. Sempre dritto, always straight on. Poi a destra, then to the right. E poi a sinistra, then to the left. The word poi means then. Guardi sulla cartina. L'ufficio postale è qui, Piazza San Giovanni. You remember what guardi means? Look, so guardi sulla cartina. Look on the map. L'ufficio postale è qui. The post office is here, in Piazza San Giovanni. Okay, so that conversation, although it was a little more complicated, it was made slightly easier when we used the phrase non capisco, I don't understand. Let's learn some more phrases now, which will help you cope with any situations where you don't understand the Italian that's been spoken to you. We'll begin by looking more closely at the word capisco. Capisco comes from the verb capire, which means to understand. So to say I understand, you say capisco. Try saying that capisco. Capisco. And therefore to make it negative, we can simply add the non in front. So I don't understand. Non capisco. Non capisco. Now, if I wanted to ask you, Katie, do you understand? And we're using an informal form because we, we know each other. So I could say, do you understand? Capisci? Capisci? Now, you probably are familiar with um, gangster films when they say capisci. And that is a shortened form of capisci. Do you understand? Capisci? Capisci? And in the formal form, if you were asking someone, do you understand, using the, the formal version, you would say, Capisce? Capisce? So now we can say, I understand. Capisco? Capisco? You understand, or do you understand informally? Capisci? Capisci? And using the formal form, capisce. Capisce. Okay, now we can use a slightly different version of this phrase. We could say, for example, I have understood or I have not understood. Let's try I have understood. We already know how to say I have. Can you remember how to say I have a brother, for example, Katie? O un fratello. O un fratello. So that word o we can use with the verb as well. I have understood O capito. O capito. So if I have understood is o capito, how would you say I have not understood? Katie, can you work that out? Mm, would it be non o capito? Perfetto. Mm -hmm. Non ho capito. Non ho capito. Now, in most situations, you can interchange non capisco and non ho capito. I don't understand. I have not understood. It doesn't matter. You will be understood no matter which one you say. But at least you know how to recognize them both. Non ho capito. I've not understood. Non ho capito. And non capisco. I don't understand. Non capisco. How do you say, how do you say in Italian? Okay, so how do you say, how do you say something in Italian? So, yes. for example, how do you say the pencil in Italian? Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, how do you say is come si dice? Come si dice? Come si dice? Come si dice? So, you could say, for example, come si dice? Pencil in Italiano. Come si dice pencil in Italiano? 
in italiano in Italian. Come si dice pencil in italiano. Come si dice pencil in italiano. Perfetto. A very useful phrase indeed. Let's talk a little bit about being able to say I speak Italian. We could learn this phrase and we could say I speak Italian. Parlo italiano. Parlo italiano. So if I speak Italian is parlo italiano, how would you say I don't speak Italian? Non parlo italiano. But of course that's lies because you do speak Italian now. Everyone speaks Italian. A little, Italian. a little bit. <laughs> okay, we'll come to that in a moment. So I speak Italian. Parlo italiano. Parlo italiano. And what about I speak English? Parlo inglese. Parlo inglese. Now, in most cases, we can use the adjectives that we've learned for nationality for the words for the language also. So, for example, if we wanted to talk about French, I speak French would be... Parlo francese. Parlo francese. And with all of these, we use the masculine form of the adjective for the language. So if we were talking about Spanish, we would say... Parlo spagnolo. Parlo spagnolo. I speak German. Parlo tedesco. Parlo tedesco. Okay. Now, that's I speak, parlo. To ask someone, do you speak? We need to decide whether it's a formal or an informal question. If you're getting to know someone, then the chances are you're maybe going to be speaking informally to them. So that question is, parli. Parli italiano? Parli italiano? So do you speak Italian? Parli italiano? Parli italiano? Now, if we wanted to ask the question formally, then the verb changes slightly. Francesca, how would we say, do you speak Italian using the formal form? Parla italiano? Katie? Parla italiano. And we could also add in the word for you, the formal you. We could say... Lei parla italiano? Lei parla italiano? But that's not necessary. It would be understood if we just ask, parla italiano, do you speak Italian? Okay, let's put this to the test because I have some questions for my co-hosts here. Oh. Francesca. Parli italiano? Sì, si, parlo italiano. E tu, Katie, parli italiano? Mm, how do you say I speak a little Italian? A little is? Un po' di. Parlo un po' di italiano? Sì. Si. Un po' di italiano o un po' di francese, un po' di spagnolo. A little of. Literally, you have to say a little of the language. So, parlo un po' di italiano. Parlo un po' di italiano. Ok. Katie, parli francese? Sì, si, parlo francese. Parli spagnolo? Sì, si, parlo spagnolo. Parli danese? <laughs> no, <laughs> non parlo danese. Perfetto. Francesca? Sì? Si? I've got a different question for you. Oh. Quali lingue parli? Parlo italiano, ovviamente, um, inglese e un po' di russo, francese, spagnolo. E tedesco? Un pochino. <laughs> That's nice, un pochino. If un po' di russo is a little... Which language, Kitty? Russian. A little Russian. Un pochino would be a little, little. Ok, un pochino. <laughs> Parlo un pochino di italiano. <laughs> ok, so which languages did Francesca say that she spoke? Let's hear it again, Francesca. And just to be clear, I'm asking the question, which languages do you speak? Quali lingue parli? Parlo italiano, ovviamente, 
e parlo inglese, parlo un po' di russo, francese e spagnolo e un pochino di tedesco. Katie, can you explain Francesca's language abilities? She said that she speaks Italian, obviously. Ovviamente. Certo. She speaks English and a bit of French, Spanish and Russo. Russian. And she also said that she speaks a little bit of German. Eccellente. Okay, Mark, your turn to show off a little. <laughs> Quali lingue parli? Allora, io parlo inglese, ovviamente. Parlo italiano, più o meno. Parlo francese. Parlo spagnolo. Un po' di portoghese. Un po' di norvegese, un po' di tedesco <laughs> e un pochino di svedese, russo, cinese e anche un pochino di greco. Mamma mia, un vero poliglotta! Adoro le lingue. I love languages. Anyway, let's think a little bit more. There's another phrase that we can use if we're learning a language. And indeed, you can use this even if you've just started learning or if you've been learning for many years. And that is, I am learning. Sto imparando. Let's slow that down a little. Mm -hmm. Sto imparando. Katie, can you try saying that? Sto imparando. Sto imparando. And we could say, I'm learning Italian. In which case, you would have to say, I'm learning the Italian. Listen. Sto imparando l'italiano. Sto imparando l'italiano. Eccellente. So imagine the situation. You have said that you don't understand, that you're just learning Italian, and then perhaps the next natural thing to say in this conversation would be can you repeat please now let's listen to this phrase can you repeat please può ripetere per favore listen again and francesca will slow this down yes può ripetere per favore Let's focus first on the word for can you. And this is formal can you. So you can use it with someone you don't know. Can you? Può. Può. It's quite tricky to say. Try it one more time. Può. Può. It's almost like saying P-W-O. Può. It's not spelled that way, but it sounds like Può. 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 Is that the same as in mi può aiutare? Exactly. We've seen it before. Mi può aiutare. Good. But in this case, it's, it's separated. We're just saying, can you repeat? Può ripetere. Può ripetere. And obviously we can add in, please, per favore. Può ripetere, per favore. Can you repeat, please? And how would you ask someone to speak more slowly? Buona domanda. Può parlare più lentamente? Può parlare più lentamente? Good. So parlare is to speak. Can you speak? Are you able to speak? We've seen parlo, I speak. Parli, you speak, informal. And parla... You speak formal. So now we've seen parlare, to speak. It's called the infinitive form. Don't worry about that just now. We'll come back to that at a later stage. So can you speak more slowly? Può parlare più lentamente, per favore. Può parlare più lentamente, per favore. Excellent. OK, we'll come back to this in a short while. It's now time to turn to Francesca for un café culturale linguistico. Sì. Since we have been talking about languages today, 
I thought it would be interesting to take a closer look at the Italian language in our Café Culturale. As I'm sure you know, l'italiano si parla, Italian is spoken in uh, Italia, nella città del Vaticano e anche in Svizzera. It's also one of the official languages of the European Union, l'Unione Europea. But do you know how many people around the world speak Italian? Ok, I'll say the number in Italian. 85 milioni. Can you work this out? If I were writing this number, I would write 8, 5, 0, 0, 0. And again, 0, 0, 0. That's right. 85 million people. Italian is a Romance language. This means it comes from the Romance family of languages. We could say that la madre dell'italiano was Latin and it has lots of fratelli e sorelle. E il francese, lo spagnolo, il portoghese, il rumeno. Negli Stati Uniti... It's the fourth most taught language. Numero uno, lo spagnolo. Numero due, il francese. E poi, numero tre, il tedesco. Ma, numero quattro, l'italiano. And on a worldwide scale, l'italiano is also the fourth most learned language. We are delighted, siamo molto contenti that you are joining us in our regular lessons of Coffee Break Italian and we hope we can add you to the 85 million Italian speakers as we continue these lessons. With that, I'll hand you back to Mark. Ciao! Grazie Francesca, molto interessante oggi. Bene! Ok. We are running quite late with this lesson. This lesson is now quite long already, but I would like to still do a conversation, a bit of review. So we're going to go back to that cocktail party that we were at a few weeks ago. Ooh. And this time we are going to be having a conversation between Eva, who is Italian, and Miguel, who is not Italian. And we're not going to discuss this in any way in our main lesson, but we will pick up on it in our bonus lesson. Ok, so have a listen. Ciao, come stai? Bene, grazie. E tu? Benissimo. Come ti chiami? Mi chiamo Miguel. Piacere, Miguel. Io mi chiamo Eva. Piacere. Sei italiana? Sì, sono italiana. E tu? Di dove sei? Sono spagnolo, di Barcellona. Ma adesso abito qui, a Lucca. Ah, benissimo. Ma parli italiano molto bene. Grazie, sto imparando da tre anni. Tu parli spagnolo? No, non parlo spagnolo. Parlo italiano e un po' di inglese. Hopefully you have understood this conversation and it's been further practice for you with these languages that we've been learning today. Now, as I said earlier, we will go through this conversation in our bonus episode. And if you'd like to find out about that and indeed our video version and our lesson notes, you can do so by visiting coffeebreakitalianplus.com. Now, lesson 10 is going to be a little different. We are going to be looking at all the language we have learned so far, which means I'll be putting myself to the test along with you guys. Join me on Facebook for a little practice beforehand at facebook.com forward slash coffee break Italian. And don't forget, we are also on Twitter at Learn Italian. And I think we should try something this time on Twitter. This week, if you would like to tell us which languages you speak, then let us know on Twitter and put hashtag CBI09 in your tweet and that way we will see what you're saying so at learn italian parlo inglese francese svedese e un po' di italiano hashtag cbi09 and we'll be able to find what you are saying grazie molto a tutti arrivederci ciao ciao
This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.